Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft and thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is project number six of my Creative Card Series 2018 and this is a large zigzag fold card. Um, I've done this using six by six. You can use, you can go taller, however if you go taller then you're going to be using four sheets of 12 by 12. This only takes two. So there's a lot of layers to this, there's a lot of cardstock used but I really, really love the finished results. So I've got a little belly band, and now the belly band goes through the middle, because as you can see, you've got these little pieces at the bottom and all the zigzags when they kind of fold over each other. So I thought the belly band looked good that way, and I've never done one that way before. So that's the little belly band there. And then basically it opens out, and it's just really, really big. So the best way for me to show is it will be up like this and basically if I go on an angle it will have that look on it so and you can imagine it on the mantle and it would just spread right across <laughs> so if I pop it back down again this way you can see now I've left some blank spaces because the the one that I, the birthday that I have this in mind for, I cannot put anything on it because that person will know it's for them. So I have an, I have a, 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 an idea of a big number going here. That's all I'm going to say because I don't want to give it away. Now I might do some journaling on here or I might do some more personalised pieces for that person. So I have left areas that are blank and then I've just put little bits here, little stickers and I've got little candles on the bottom there. I've got a cupcake, the same little cupcakes, and again, those little candles are there. And then on the top here, I've put some little Nouveau drops, little party hat, it's your birthday, and then this bunting from one of the dies that I've got. The papers I've used are the Let's Celebrate by um, First Edition, which again, I've used loads of, and I know I'm gonna continue to use these loads because they are just awesome papers. Um, and then, yeah, so then if you open it up, that's on the back side. So depending on where you have it, you might have it on a freestanding side, um, tabletop or something, so people might see the back of it as well, um, and there as well. So if you do want to write a message on it, you could have your message on any one of these, um, I'd say these ones here, because on that one, you want to make sure that it's, it's obviously down low, or you can have it right on the back as well. Okay, now you may want to put a little envelope pocket little thing here and you can have your message in there. So there's loads and loads of room. It's kind of like a, you know, it's got a scrapbook feel to it as well because there's so many sides to this. Um, but it looks brilliant. And you can have it like that or you could have it kind of displayed like that. It's entirely up to that person really. But either way, you will see everything on it. So, and it all just squashes up into a six by six and then finished off with the belly band. Now, obviously you can... Um, pop this in an envelope if you want to, if you are going to be posting it, but I will be giving this by hand, as I do with most of my fun fold cards, so um, I'm not obviously too worried about that, and then the belly band just slides down, it's a little bit more fiddlier than other belly bands, but the idea is once this belly band's taken off, that person's not going to put it back on again, so it's just the initial once you've lined it up. It's easy to do, it's just obviously a bit different because we're going in a different orientation to a normal belly band. But I think when it's presented, it looks really, really nice. So, what I would say first of all is just watch the tutorial because there are lots and lots of parts to it and um, lots of tips along the way to make sure that you get it exactly right. So, everything will be listed in my blog as well and there's lots of measurements, there's lots and lots of mats to this. So first of all, you need, let me grab my school board. So you're going to need two pieces of 12 by 12 paper. Now, if you don't have two pieces of the same colour, 12 by 12, then have different colours. It doesn't matter. Once you see how I'm putting it together, then it will make sense. So, pop them to one side for the minute. So this here would have been a sheet of 12 by 12, okay? So you want to pop it in your trimmer and trim it at six inches. So you have two six by 12 pieces, which I now have here, okay? Then what you want to do is with one of the pieces, you're gonna pop it in your scoreboard along the 12 inch side, okay? Sorry, I'm sat on my chair on an angle, so I keep putting my <laughs> scoreboard, there we go. So what you want to do is you're gonna score at, you're going to 
when you score a score line, when you sc you squash down, let me grab a um, little scrap bit of card here. Here we go. I can use the an edge of this here because I'm going to trim this back anyway. When I score, so there we go. So I'm scoring at one inch on this piece of card. You are squashing down the fibres into the track of that scoreboard basically enabling you to be able to fold that around. So now that card can stretch all the way around to form that fold, okay? Now that's what pre prevents cracking. If I then went to just fold that without scoring and then use my bone tool. See, this is good card, so it's not really gonna, yeah. You can very, very lightly see some cracking coming through, even on a really good card. Whereas if I just then burnish the one that I've scored, you get a really nice, not only do you get a really neat, but you can see the difference there between this one that's quite crinkled and it's, it's lifted just ever so slightly to the one that I've scored. Now if I, when you score down on your card, you then fold under. If you were to fold up, so again, if I score at two inches, now if I fold that up, you are stretching what has already been squashed down over the, the wrong way. So again, if I just burnish that out, even though I've scored it, it's starting to crack. I can see little cracks forming there, okay? So that's why when we go to do any kind of zigzag folding, not all the time, but because we're doing a lot, um, you're going to be flipping this over different ways. So I just wanted to explain that at the beginning so that now it makes sense when I tell you to do this. So the first score line, you've got your 12 by 6 piece here. The first score line, you're going to score it 3 inches and you're going to score that way. Okay, And then we're going to fold that way. So we've got no cracking, it's folded the right way. Now you want to flip your card over, score your second one at six, okay? And then flip it back again, because now that one's going to fold that way. And that one's obviously already folded that way. So now it gives us two really nice folds with no cracking. And we get one of our sides starting to form. Then grab your other piece. Now this piece I went wrong on with my scoring and I had some cracking. Now I didn't have any more card the same, so I've kept it and I've just put some glue just to stop that cracking going any further. Now it's slightly shiny, but once I've decorated it, you won't notice that anyway. So then with this one here, you're going to, again, pop it in the six by 12, flip it over first, score it six, flip it back and score it nine. And I'm not gonna do that one because I've already glued it and score it nine. And then again, fold that one in, and fold that one over. So then, this is gonna sit on top, or the other one on top is entirely up to you, and we're gonna stick them together and it's gonna already form these two. So it's, at the moment, it's like a, a double gatefold, okay? So what I would say now is I'm gonna get this one glued down just so that it makes a lot more sense to you guys as I'm going through this. So I'm just using my Tombow and cover the whole back of this piece here. Now like I said, it doesn't matter which one you're putting on top. I don't want to go over with the Tombow because otherwise it gets really tacky and I have to end up using my eraser. And then just stick that one directly over the top. Okay. Now, I do need to trim this and it'd be easier to trim it without sticking it on, but I'm sticking it on so it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing and it all to make sense. So, I'm just gonna spread that out. Okay, so now you can see the card that we've got forming, okay? Like so. Pop that to one side and then you're gonna have your, two, your other piece of 12 by 12. Again, you wanna uh, trim it at six so you've got two pieces of six by 12, which we've got here. And then basically what's gonna happen is I've formed this concertina here. Basically this piece will stick under there and that's gonna give us a really long side to that card, okay? So 
like this one here. First of all, so you've got it in your 12 inch position. Flip it over, it doesn't actually matter, it's because I've already scored this. You're gonna score, flip it over, score at six. Sorry, I didn't even say where to score. So the first one, score at three. Flip it over and score at six. Flip it over and score at nine. Okay. And then we're gonna score up and um, fold it up, fold down and fold up. So we've created an M. Okay, so that is what you want there. And again, no cracking, because we've, we've folded those score lines all in the right directions. Now go ahead, obviously burnish, make sure that's all nice and keeps its shape, okay? And do that again with the other one, okay? So again, pop this one in. I'm only flipping it over so I know what I've already, so this one is at three, score, flip it over at six, and flip it over at nine. Okay, and again, over, under, over. So, W or an M, doesn't matter, okay? And again, just burnish them. And I know I don't need to worry about any cracking or anything, because it's gonna be fine. So, we'll have two M shapes, or two W shapes, and the beginning of a, um, what's this, a double e, uh, easel fold at the minute, okay? Now we can do some trimming, and I'll go through all the layers with you. So, grab your trimmer. If you don't have a trimmer, you can use your ruler and a cutting knife, that would be fine as well. Now, with this piece here, like I said, it's gonna be a bit fiddly, but basically, get rid of that for the minute, let's just do a little bit of pencil um, markings. So, if you grab your ruler, so on your two, so it's just cracked a little bit, that was again, because that this was the side that I went wrong on, but I'm gonna do my best to cover it all up, and you shouldn't notice it. So you've got your large six by six area, let's just pop that up there. So we've got our large six by six area, and then two three by six panels here. Starting from this score line, the top, so the um, top right of the six by six square, you're going to, so that's obviously six inches, then come along to the next one, and you wanna put a pencil mark at five, and then come along to the very end and put a pencil mark at four, okay? And then just draw a pencil line, and it should all meet up from that four inch marker to that point of the top right hand of that six by six square. Okay, let me just bring that up there, you can see. Now, you can either just use your, this particular Tim Holtz ruler has a metal side, so I'm just flip it over and cut that with my, actually I'm going to, I'm gonna cut it with my cutting knife because it'd be easier than me trying to fit this in my trimmer. So, again, make sure it's nice and straight and try and do it in one nice cut. Always push your cut cutting knife up to your ruler, obviously taking care with your fingers. And there we go. Okay, so that is the first, you can see now that zigzag starting to form. You want to do the same then on this side, so you've got your top left of your six by six square, from the top left come across to the next one, and you just want to put a pencil mark at five inches and the very outer side, pencil mark at four inches. Again, just join that all up so it all meets up nicely. Okay, you can see my pencil mark. And then again, with my cutting knife, I'm going to have to come around this way. Okay. Now if you would prefer doing that with scissors, you've got the pencil mark there, you can do. All right, so your trimmer, scissors, or your cutting knife. Lots of ways to do that. I've got a little bit of pencil showing, so I'm just gonna rub that out there and there. So that now is done. So just pop that again to one side, and now bring in these pieces here, actually, before we do that. So you will have them, okay? So have them both in an M shape, okay? And basically, this is gonna sit under this last panel on that main bit of card that we put together, it's gonna to sit under. But obviously before we do that, I'll use that one, because I've already marked these with my pencils. 
yeah, that one there. So before we do that, we need to mark these ones and get these ones cut down because obviously all this needs to cut off. So with one of your pieces, okay, so this is going to be my right hand side of my card. So it's going to go from this side here, the right hand side. Starting from the very far left, okay, you want to mark a pencil mark at five inches. Okay, so five inches there. Then come into the next um, score line, your first score line as such, so that's four inches you want to mark there with a pencil. Come across in again, three inches with a pencil mark, and then two inches with a pencil mark, and then the very, very outer one will be one inches. Okay, then join them all up. So will my ruler meet up? No, I'm gonna eyeball that last one. If your ruler doesn't stretch, just grab another ruler just to make sure it is, that last bit does line up, that will do. And then I can just carry on that last bit. Okay, so that is, you can see my pencil mark there. So now you can cut that with your scissors if you want, or you can use your cutting knife. I'm going to do my cutting knife again. So again, just crack on and get that cut. Okay. So that is that one. So now, get rid of that. Keep that for embellishing and stuff, because you can die cut. That is going to sit underneath. So now it's completely flush. If it's coming over, actually, mine's coming over a little bit, because there's a lot of freestyle cutting here. I've got about not even a millimetre just coming over the top there. I can trim that. But that's going to fold over, over, and over. So you can see now that front panel forming. So what I will end up doing, actually, I'll just do that now, is just that very end one. I'm just going to take off because this is going behind so you're not going to see it anyway you can see that I've just taken off the tiniest little piece there and now yeah that fits in perfectly okay so that's the right hand side done now with the left hand side again that one's going to pop in underneath like so so you want to do exactly the same measurements but this time instead of starting from the left hand side we're starting from the right hand side so again, pop your ruler in, and where did I put my, there's my pencil. You want to do a pencil mark at five on the very outer right hand side, then come in, do one at four, and on each score line just drop down in one inch increments. So three, and then two inches, and the very last outer side will be one inches. And again, just draw your pencil mark. Okay, so again, I'm gonna cut that with my trimmer, my cutting knife even. Okay, so that's that one done. Again, I'm gonna pop it underneath there, just see if I need to trim any off. But that one is completely flush, so that one is fine. So I've got that one on that side, pop that one under there, and that one on that side. And that is the card done. So we just need to stick it all down. So what you need to do, is starting on the left hand side here so you want to add glue on the back okay so that's it folded down add it on the back of this piece or the very front of this largest piece here okay so whatever works so I'm going to do it on the back of this one and this is a very strong card because as you can see we're you know we're layering up the back piece has got two pieces of six by six. This has got two pieces now on here. All of the layers of paper that we're going to be putting on top as well. Um, so it does. It really does hold itself up well. That's that one done. And then again on this one. So I'm going to pop my glue all in here. And again, pop that one in and fold that over. So there is a little bit overhanging here, so I am just going to go in. You can see, like I said, it's so easy to just trim if there's any bits there. So that's that one. So now we have a rather large double zigzag card. So if I just bring that up, you can see now, like I said, I prefer it open this way and going right along like a mantle um, table somewhere. I just think it'll look really cool like that. So. 
ready for to decorate blah, 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 blah. <laughs> ready to decorate or ready for decoration I think I was trying to say both of them at the same time okay so these are all of my mats for the for the inside okay so don't worry about the outside for the minute again I'm trying to explain this all to you as easy as possible so grab my school board and I'm just going to talk through all the layers so for your main mat for the inside back six by six piece you want a piece of five and a half by five and a half now if you want to put a mat in slightly bigger than that you can do five and three quarters by five and three quarters because it's a six by six square but I wanted the same frame that I have around this around all of these so I have about a quarter inch um, frame around all of my other mats that I'm going to lay down so that one is going there might have it that way actually and then I've got these really fun which I fussy cut from one of the 12 by 12 sheets from that pack but this is all going to be a flamingo theme and that's going to go on the back of that one there so that's for your main piece then for that one there um, sorry I've got mine all laid out for left and right so that's why but you need two of every size I'm going to give you you need two of that size so two pieces of the width is the same for everything so it's two and five eighths of an inch width so two and five eighths of an inch by five and three eighths of an inch you want two pieces then you want um, two pieces again of two and five eighths of an inch by four and three eighths two pieces of two and five eighths of an inch by three and three eighths of an inch and then two and five eighths of an inch by two and a half and again two and five eighths of an inch by one and a half two of all of those sizes then pop them into two piles okay so you have all these descending sizes all right because these are going to be on each of these panels and obviously they're all different sizes then what you want to do is on your largest ones flip them over now I've already labeled all of mine and on the longest side on the on one of the pieces on the right hand side at four and a half okay so I've got four and a half here come up four and a half and put a pencil mark okay now you don't need to worry about doing a pencil mark on the next piece just butt them up against each other and just carry on your pencil mark across the two okay so if I just bring that you can see my pencil mark there okay and basically we're going to be cutting from that corner down to there that corner down to there and then it will give us our in this case that's my left hand side and that's my right hand side and I would advise you to write that on the back so on the one where you've just put your pencil mark on the right hand side it will be going on the left hand side of your card because it's obviously going to be flipped over okay so let me just cut that just so it again makes it all easier to understand I'll put the rest through my trimmer but I'm just going to do this one freehand so just cut from that pencil mark up to the top left of my card so now when I flip that over it will sit in here giving me the same border that this gives me here okay again now if I cut this one just cut up again it's now going to go on the right hand side there like so okay so leave those two in there for the minute so now I'm just going to go through all the others so the next biggest ones that you have cut flip over and you are going to from the bottom come up on the long the longest um, right hand side on the first piece at three and a half okay so just put a pencil mark there at three and a half and then flip over your other piece butt it up next to it and just carry on that pencil mark across so again there you can see my two pencil marks and I've just wrote on here inside second biggest piece left hand side inside second biggest piece right hand side okay and then just put them in the piles and get them all done that way and it's much much easier so that's those ones then the 
third biggest pieces here, flip over. The one on my left hand side, you're coming up along the right hand side. Once you do this, you will understand. It's, it may be sounding very confusing as I'm talking it through, saying left, right, upside down, backwards, forwards, all that lot. Once you start doing it, it will be fine. You're coming up here at two and a half inches. Pencil mark, again, butt them up against each other and continue that. And you can see that's what I was doing, then sitting it on top of each other. Then the next two there, flip them over and you want to come up here. So this is our piece that was two and a half high. You want to come up at one and a half. And again, pencil mark. And then the very smallest pieces, flip them over. Always keeping that two and five eighths of an inch width along the bottom. It's always your bottom piece. You're all, the only bit where you're doing your pencil marking is along the different heights the sides that are all different heights. So this one here, you are coming up at uh, 5 eighths of an inch. And again, pop them together, 5 eighths of an inch. And sit them on top. So now I've got all of them all ready. Now I'm gonna pop them through my trimmer. And the easiest way to do this as well, so where the pencil mark is, pop that in Put the point in the track, the pencil mark in the track, and then start always from the pencil side because that way you won't bucker up, buckle even, your end here. So you'll get a nice point. So now when I flip that over, I've got a nice um, mat there ready to go down. And do the same two each time. So that's that one done, so I'll just keep that there. And again, I've got my pencil now at the top on this one and the point in the track at the bottom. So now I'll start coming down from the top. Always come in first from that pencil piece and then flip them over and you can see now I've got my two nice pieces. So pop them to one side and then the next size again. And just go through all of your pieces and, um, sorry, I was just obviously concentrating there, um, and get them all cut. Okay, so if I just bring over, so that's how I'm keeping them all together. As you can see now I've got all my left hand side one's ready so again and I will have that one that was the largest one so that will go there 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 and there okay so I'm just going to keep them all to one side and grab that other one keep my piles there and just fold that back up and then do the the back one. So that was all. I'm um, sorry, the front. So that was all for the inside of the card. Now we want to decorate what you will see when this is all folded down. So in this instance, it's these ones here with all these triangle the uh, pattern paper there. All right. So for these, it's exactly the same sizes. Um, again, two of all those same sizes that I went through before. Okay. Uh, I just didn't want you getting confused and obviously you can choose the papers um, so you'll need two of every size but for the front I've kept all the same paper. Okay so all the same sizes and then all the same um, so it's exactly the same alright so the same measurement that I done for the large piece pencil mark butt them up together pencil mark together again the next size down and just this time just put front left um, front right etc and I've got left and right, yeah I've done them right on those ones, I don't know what I was doing there. Again left and right, you can see all those pencil marks, all exactly the same measurements coming up from the bottom. And when you're cutting it with your trimmer, as long as you're, if you, this is why it's always so handy to write on this, because when you put it in your trimmer, um, for example here, Make sure your writing is, you know, facing the right way up when you put it in and then you'll know that you're cutting that pencil mark to that corner and not the pencil mark to that corner, for example, because if you did do it that way, then your writing is upside down. So keep the writing up the right way and then you know, pop that in my trimmer and line it all up, come up from the pencil side, you're getting the right. So now that one is going oh, on this side here. I need to burnish these again because they're all jumping around like so. And that's what you'll see. And then the next one will be 
so on and so forth okay so just go through go back do the same measurements again um, and then get them all trimmed up exactly the same way okay okay so now you should have four piles of um, all your different mats so my inside left and right and my outside left and right so start with anyone it doesn't really matter um, and basically you, you know where they're to go um, although I've just said left and right and that's it should be that way around for those and again yeah that way <laughs> so you should have it like your piles so when they're sat they're going that way coming down and up okay so now I can open this one up for the front and that's going to go there and then the next one is going to be this side is going to go in there and the next one is going to be this one going in there and then the next one coming from this side is there and then the last one from that side goes in there Sorry, I'm trying to keep all this in shot okay and then for this one your largest one will go in there next side like so like that like that and like that I love that paper okay so pop them all there now I'm going to go and get them all stuck down okay so that's all the front ones stuck down and one thing I should probably mention is it's the front panels that you can see when it's folded in place because actually when I open this out you can see that some are on what you may call obviously this is the inside and then some are on the outside so when I mean the outside and the inside I mean what it's like in its folded form and what you phys what panels you physically see from the front okay so in this instance you know they are like so so that one and then it becomes those two and then those two those two and then that one okay then now your ones that you're going to see from the inside you will just stick now so the ones that are on my left are going to go on every free panel on the left hand side so um, and then whatever ones um, are left over will go on the outer ones here so for example sorry I've done it the wrong way again it's going to be this side so the largest one is going to be here and here okay and then my next size down will be these ones will be on the outside then these two are going to be here and here and then those are on the outside and then those two are on the inside so I've, I've done it so that I've got um, different patterns on every single panel so I'll stick all these down and then I'll show you in more detail okay so that's that one side there so now when that all folds up and then when you look at it oh no you don't see that side because that's one big piece but you can see there and then if I flip this one over I've got then that one and that one going in there so whatever the ones that are left just you know it's like a jigsaw you'll know which one they're meant to go in um, by their size so backside and inside all done now if you're using all the same pattern paper for everything it is a lot easier I probably showed you the harder way because I wanted all of mine different um, but if you imagine this is all of the same then basically you would just cut um, from the I would cut a piece of um, what would be five and a half tall and then you would cut all the way down to what was that five eighths of an inch from the bottom all right so you cut all the way down and then just do two and um, five eighths of an inch strips cut that down and then that would be your pieces and then obviously just um, pop them all in so that's it is easier to do if you've got the same color but I didn't want to do it that way so that's that side done and then with what whatever's left over I know that piece is going to go there that piece is going to go there flip this all over and that piece will go there and that piece will go there so I'll do those now while I'm on that side okay so that is now all finished with my um, mats 
Um, I've probably made that a lot more confusing <laughs> than it needed to be because when I was looking on the back I'm thinking those pencils what I've wrote like left is actually on the right and and so on and so forth but it does all work so I would still say follow that way um, but just ignore maybe what you've wrote because that won't um, obviously be the case but it just keeps you organized because it certainly did for me anyway so now again it's so strong now you can see there how that's going to look it looks so cool really really like it and you can have it any way you want so like i said you could join the bottom you could have when it's all squashed up you could actually have something across here and a big you know like i could have that attached at the front so that then when you pull this out you would pull it out front front on like so and that would be stuck at the very front like that but again the person who gets it may not know to do that whereas when it's like this it's just easy that person will know that they can have it like this so now it's just down to the decoration so like i said i've got that one going there and then i picked these up from the pound shop I wish I got more now because I've already used a lot of them on the other one and I'm going to end up using the last bits on here but the colours and everything worked really well with this um, with these papers so um, and I need to talk you through the belly band as well so I'm going to go and decorate everything and then I will talk you through that in a minute okay so I have decorated let me just bring this up that's my inside panel I'll put some nouveau drops in there which are just drying but again I've left this area free so I can put a number there because I, I want these to be used for big birthdays so yeah that's all ready to be um, personalized more and then obviously the two panels here I can put stuff too but I do I really love this it's that same paper I used on the um, easel gatefold card or gatefold easel card I can't remember what I called it um, and um, I use that paper I just love the candles and then be careful of my Nouveau drops there that's the fussy cut flamingo with the presents I have a present die which I've just remembered so I'm probably going to die cut some presents and put even more along there birthday cake which was one of those stickers and then these two are still free to do what I need to and then again on this side it's the other flamingo there on the unicycle and then a birthday little cupcake and again and when that all folds down again I don't want to do it yet because of the drops are still drying but that's what you see okay so you can see a little bit of the bunt in there it doesn't matter I guess if you wanted to you could pull that down a bit but I'm gonna let that one dry now and talk you through the belly band so for my belly band I am using the leftover card so you'll have this piece here and the shortest edge there is one inch so I'm just going to sit it at one inch in my trimmer and just cut the whole piece I'm not worried about the score lines there will be I'll show you what I do actually because it's what I've done on the other one so basically um, when we fold it around so it will be like that so those two score lines we will actually be using it's just that back score line there and if it really bothers you you can rub it out to a degree but you could also put something over it so there's no reason why you can't decorate the back as well so for example here you can just kind of see that score line there but you could easily decorate something on the back there but it's just using up all the card that you have and obviously keeping it all matching as well so with that folded over and this one here I'm going to have the same um, oh no I've ripped it that's why I remember I've done that so let's have instead happy birthday and many more I'm going to use that one and these already come with a foam backing but I actually want to frame them so I'm just going to peel off that as best as I can so you can see what I've done here so I framed it and then die cut it on this stitched um, little rectangle die there so I'm just going to pop some glue on the back of that and then pop it in this one here like so and then I'm just using what size one it was that I had I think it was that one there yeah it was so then that is going to go around and I will get that one die cut so I'm just going to trim okay so that's that one cut out move that all to one side so now just got a nice little frame and again I'm going to add some clear Nouveau to that in a minute but also what I want to do because on this one here I just put the little party hat but 
on here I want to use this somehow so I'm probably going to have it stuck on the top like so and then have some nouveau drops down there maybe or do I have it no it's going to be at the top so I'm going to stick this down first so fold your so this is that 12 by 1 piece fold it over so they they just about join um, actually we need to wrap it so I'm going to pretend this is the one that I've done because my nouveau drops are still drying on that other one so let's just take this off wrap it around because it will come up slightly higher at this bottom end because of all the bulk and all the layers this end's only got that one piece so sit it in so the score lines line up and then this one here just bring it over where it naturally wants to fold and then bring that one down you can see now it's created that kind of quarter inch gap that's that's fine okay that's where it needs to be and then just add some glue like so and then I'm going to sit that again until it's all in place nice and straight okay so just take it off and then fold it up and you'll see where it's folded over that bottom piece it's about just under a quarter of an inch there just burnish one of the lines and then fold it back over on that other one where it wants to obviously sit and do that you don't need to do it on the bottom one, the top one's fine with just that one line there, which again I'll just burnish. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my clear Nouveau. And I don't know if I'm going to use these yet, so for the minute I'm just going to pop a few. These are those glittery ones, I really like these. A nice big one there. I'm just going to leave them like that for the minute and let it all dry and then I'll see how I want to decorate it. Okay, so my Nuva drops dried. I've just popped the belly band on there and then I was just seeing, still trying to play around with this because I do really like it. But I'm thinking now maybe just having the balloons on there. This really does need to go down the bottom if I'm to use it. It could work there, but I don't know if it looks a bit silly or not. Now I'm keeping it plain and I've just trimmed off the bottom bit there and I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue. Okay, it's just a little bit of glue because I didn't go right up to the edge with it when I stuck it down there. So, And just pop that there. There you go, little balloon. I'll keep that for another project. So there is the card. It's great. Like I said, <laughs> watch the video first because you'll probably look at it and go, oh, it's much easier to do it that way, or why didn't you do it that way? So um, yeah, but hey ho, that's how we learn and it still works out fine. Um, you can see how to make the main base of the card and then the mats and that is entirely up to you really. So again, just pull it all out here. You can see I've got my Nuvo drops, a nice little bit in the middle there, and then all of my panels and then, like I said, I can dress up more pieces if I feel I need to. So, there we go. Just be careful when you are decorating as well that you don't come over. Obviously, I've decorated that panel there. When it closes, you don't want it to come out the top here. So just always keep it folded down whenever you go to do these bits. Make sure it all um, works out right for you. And then just pop, pop the belly band on. Obviously, it's thicker at the bottom just to hold all of that in and like I said it is a bit fiddly to put on but this is the kind of thing that once it's been done once it's taken off it won't be put on again because that person will then display it so just pop it in the middle there to hold it all in place and that is the other one again just to give you inspiration it's a bit more plainer but again really like that one so hope you've enjoyed the sixth project last one is on Saturday um, Again, thank you for all the lovely comments. You seem to really be enjoying it and I've loved receiving the pictures of your versions as well. So do send them in if you have any. Um, but until Saturday, please hit the thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.